Ladies and gentlemen, I invested in Seifu over a week ago, and I'm going to share with you how much money I made with this project. Now, this is not a sponsored content in any way, shape, or form, and I didn't necessarily love this project. I sent an email out to my newsletter subscribers, um, and I asked them, I said, hey, you know, what are some projects that you're currently investing in or that you like? And I got all sorts of responses back, and I was shocked how many people mentioned this project. So I'll tell you the story about what made me, because it wasn't, that's not why, that is part of the reason I looked at the project, but I saw something, there was a play that I saw that I was going to try to make, and I'll share that with you uh, here in this video. There's two common strategies that I use, well, I guess there's actually probably three, but in a high risk project, a really high risk project, there's two common strategies that I like to use. And one of them I'll discuss here in this video. But the the thing with Seifu, first of all, I I, I got to say this, and I just got to be honest. I got to be transparent. This is not a project that I think is going to actually go anywhere long term. Now, just like with anything in crypto, something doesn't have to make sense for you to be able to make money on it. And I understand that. The The thing that has cost me the most opportunity in crypto is trying to get overly self-righteous about a project or to become overly loyal to a project. It's amazing. Seifu has competitors, but the tribalism in the community is nuts where if they would understand how Seifu works and how the other forks work and if they would notice that and I know someone just says Seifu is not a fork it doesn't matter it works the the mechanics work very similarly so whether you call it a fork or not is irrelevant so you just call you just you just prove my point about your tribalism come on let's be smarter than the developers as investors developers have to drink their own Kool-Aid to promote their own projects as investors we get to look at a project and we get to learn about a project. And once you learn how to make money in one of these types of projects, you can learn to make money in all of them because there's opportunity in all of them. So here's the thing about Seifu, any of these projects, this high APY, it's supply and demand. The more supply that is on the market, the less demand there is for it. The more people are going to sell it. And there's this unrealistic belief that, People aren't going to sell because they're going to want to hold it longer, longer, longer. But it's not true. There's always a critical mass moment, meaning at some point there's a turning point. And it's not always crystal clear. It's not always super obvious. I can prove that to you in a moment. But there comes a time where the market as a whole is selling more rewards or selling more tokens for profit than they're keeping. That time will come. The higher the APY is, the faster that time will come. So, and th these are a new type of project, and, and it's interesting because one of the reasons you can make money is because the general crypto investing community at large that invest into these types of projects don't fully understand the psychology of how that works, and they assume that auto staking is going to keep someone locked into a project. So I, I saw say food. First thing I did was went and looked at the chart. I'm like, how long has it been around? So this is the daily chart, by the way. Always look at the daily chart. Always. Um, so this is the daily chart. And I was like, and, and when I looked at it, it was right here, right? And so it was this day right here. I saw this big red candle and I thought it's over with. But then I looked at the Titano chart and Titano, I mean, this thing is about to hit another top here. And I thought, wow, if you would have bought the bottoms, there was definitely money to be made here because it kept rebounding. It kept rebounding. This is unusual. A lot of these Titano forks, are not doing this kind of, and I, I almost wonder if there's some sort of manipulation going on, but it doesn't matter. There might not be. It could just be the psychology. If people see it dump, they're like, I want to hold it, hold it, hold it. Someone makes enough rewards, they dump again. Hold it, hold it, hold it. They dump again. Hold it, hold it. Now, mind you, these are dumps. These are daily candles. These are consecutive days going down. Consecutive days going down. So the hard, the hard thing about playing these types of projects is that when, this, when they're buying... When the price is going up and people are buying, it's going up, 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 up. And it goes up really in part just because there's a lot of people holding and a few buyers. The volume of some of these projects isn't crazy, crazy high. But then it's, it's like there's sheer panic. But it doesn't matter. Notice on this panic here, there was a chance to buy. On this panic here, there was a chance to buy. And there was a chance to sell for profit. So I thought, okay, what if Seifu follows the same route? No guarantee that it would. None right here. It could just die right here. But I decided to jump in with a, a little bit of an, a small investment for me based on my overall portfolio. Probably a large investment for somebody else. So I, I decided to jump in. I jumped in right here. 
The day after I jumped in, it went all the way down here. And I thought, oh, well, that sucks. Because the, the, what you're trying to do is, is catch pretty close to the bottom. And I thought, oh, well, that sucks. And so I knew, okay, I need to attempt to break even on this project. I need to, you know, see if I can. If not, you know, it's a loss. So today's the day where I've actually made a little bit of profit. And I made some profit here and I held it. Of course, it fell back down. And it's it's here. I've made a little bit of profit. So my rule was after seeing this big dip, okay, I'm not going to ride this roller coaster. Yes, there is a possibility it does what Titano did and it keeps going. But there's there's other easier ways to be able to make money in crypto. And the developer of Seifu, the guy has a history. I always I think what's more important, a lot of people like the fact that he goes on um, YouTube almost every day and he does a live and he talks. And I think that's great. I mean, I think that's awesome that he does that. I think it's really smart. I love when developers communicate. But I always look at developer track records and a lot of people like to call his past project scams. I'm not going to go that far, although there is one project that does look like it was shady. I mean, it looks very shady. Um, it's kind of hard to defend. But the, even if you don't, even if you say it wasn't a scam outright, he has a track record of not being able to have successful projects. And that's okay in and of itself if he just has, is trying to create, if he's had trouble having a successful project. That that in and of itself is okay. Um, I mean, every business owner fails. I failed in business. A lot of people fail in business. That's okay. But as an investor, it's like you just have to look at it and be like, mm, do I want to take this particular ride? He doesn't have a track record of making this succeed. If he was an athlete, would I want to pay him a salary? And I'm not going to pay this developer a salary or, in this case, give him my quote-unquote salary or my investment to be able to see what his project is going to do because he doesn't have a track record of creating great projects. Um, so I like to invest in developers who have great ideas with great talent and it's okay if it's their first project. If it's innovative and it looks like it can work, I'll take a flyer on that. It may not go in heavy, but I'll take a flyer on a first project. But when you've had multiple projects that's failed, I'm just less likely to want to take that ride. Now, understand what I'm saying. Don't don't hear what I'm not saying. People, you know, I'm telling you, the pros are the project may keep going. Titano keeps going. I think there's a way and a window to be able to make some profit. If I wanted to, I could sell half my uh, bag here and hold the other half and, and limit some of my risk. There's ways to do this. If, if you're in this type of project and you like it, and, and just because I'm making the decision to get out doesn't necessarily mean that you need to make the decision to get out. That's not what I'm saying. I'm trying to let you understand why I'm making this decision and so you can take this information, run it through your own brain, run it through your own emotional, mental processes and make your own decision. So for me, I'm getting out. Let's talk about how much I actually made on this project. Um, let's come over here. So I came in with about $3,000 is what I came in with. And I actually came in with, I want to say it was 9.5 BNB, but BNB was down. If you come to USD value, which can, which matters, by the way, if you're going to trade out of a project for another project, you want to make certain. So I came in with about $3,000. I'm going to get out. So in USD value, I'll make about $217 is what I'm going to make. In BNB value, I'm down. I would have been better off just to hold my BNB. But that's how the cookie crumbles in crypto. Now, if you would like to know where I'm going to be putting these funds, make certain you uh, follow the channel. Subscribe to our Crypto Passive Profits newsletter down in the description. I've got some content coming up talking about some strategies that I'm imploring and, and projects that I'm, I'm personally looking at. And on this channel, we love to talk about passive income. If you're looking for projects that can be a little bit less risky, but still be able to pay out uh, stable APYs and things like ETH and, you know, BNB and, and, you know, major type of token, not farming type of tokens. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and stay tuned for that video. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Decentralized cryptocurrency equals freedom. This is Crypto Wealth. I'm out. Oh, I guess I should make this swap, huh? Someone's going to say, oh, he didn't really swap. That that sucks. Okay. Let's go to, was it 20%? I don't even know. What is it? These projects have a huge taxes. That's kind of how they work. Let's swap. Let's see what I end up with. That's important.
Or it actually had to stop the video and, and go back and look to see what my previous holdings were. It looks like I ended up on that transaction clearing 8.2 BNB on that sale. So just to see, now let's see what I ended up earning. 8.2. So it cleared, looks like I cleared about $166 if I did my math right on that one. Which is totally fine. Again, in, for me, this was basically a bad buy. I came in here thinking because we were headed back up thinking we might get a good bounce and we may come up here because um, that oftentimes happens and it still may. But what happened was it went down further. So I was looking for an exit point. That, I mean, that's the truth on that one. It came back down. I was like, uh, looking for an exit. So, and, and, and it was hard right here. I mean, it's just trader psychology because of course you, you, within a couple of days, you go back and hit your previous levels where you bought in at and you think, okay, is this going to be the climb up? It dipped again, and I thought, okay, that's a clue. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get out. Now, those of you that are still in safe food, you like these high-risk projects, good luck. I just, you know, added to your fire pit or whatever you call it, and hopefully this thing continues to trend up for you. Um, all the best. Be careful. Stay safe out there. Crypto is crazy, and we just hit a high since I started this video, I, I believe. Take care. I'm out.